If you want the best Egypt itinerary for seven days, an option that includes a Nile cruise or one that includes visiting the city of Alexandria, keep watching this video. I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. I help travelers with customized itineraries for trips to Egypt, I connect travelers with vetted and trusted local guides, and I even lead guided tours myself. You can send me an email at any time, gus at egyptadventurestravel.com, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'm often asked what the perfect itinerary is for a trip to Egypt, and this kind of goes hand in hand with one of my previous videos where I talked about how many days is enough for Egypt, or how many days does a traveler need in order to see the highlights in Egypt. So I wanted to do a video series where I give different options for itineraries, and this video is all about spending seven days in Egypt. Now in my previous video where I talked about how much time to spend in Egypt, I talked about seven days in Egypt not really meaning seven travel days. It usually means for travelers coming from the United States about nine days total because oftentimes it takes two days just to get from the US over to Egypt because of layovers and time zone changes. And then often travelers will leave Egypt very early in the morning on their last day at like one in the morning, two in the morning, maybe a little bit later, like eight or 9 a.m. And then they'll get back to the United States that same exact day. So seven days in Egypt, what it really means is probably a nine day trip. In this video, I'm gonna go over two different itinerary versions for seven days in Egypt. The first itinerary version is one that includes a Nile cruise. So for those travelers looking to check off that bucket list item of cruising up the Nile River, that itinerary is for them. My second itinerary is actually my preferred way to travel in Egypt, and this one doesn't include a Nile cruise, but it gives more flexibility so travelers can see the city of Alexandria up on the Mediterranean Sea, in addition to visiting Cairo, Luxor, and Aswan. So let's get started with those two itineraries. And a quick note, I'm gonna have a blurb at the end of this video and also in the video description where I'll share how you can get these itineraries for free to help you plan your trip to Egypt. Now let's talk about the first seven day itinerary I made that includes a Nile cruise. I had this itinerary start on a Monday on April 3rd, just a fictional date that I chose, and I chose a fictional departure city of Minneapolis where I live. The flight departs Minneapolis in the afternoon and then arrives to Paris the next day. And there's a long layover in Paris where a traveler could visit the city if they wanted to or hang out at the airport. And then flying from Paris to Cairo that afternoon and then arriving to Cairo late in that evening. So this kind of illustrates that point I was talking about earlier. We left Minneapolis on a Monday, but we didn't get to Egypt until late, late Tuesday night. So even though we started the trip on Monday, our time in Egypt doesn't really start until that Wednesday. The reason why I had the trip start on a Monday, which is kind of a weird day to have a trip start, is because I want to make the best use of the timing of a Nile River cruise. Nile cruises can go from Aswan up to Luxor, or they can go from Luxor down to Aswan, and they run on a fixed schedule. The most availability and some of the best boats will leave Aswan on Fridays. So I wanted to time the itinerary so that I'm arriving in Cairo to have a couple of days in Cairo and then getting down to Aswan on Friday to start that Nile cruise up to Luxor. Travelers could also opt to cruise from Luxor down to Aswan, which has other options for days. But the problem with that is those cruises are a day longer. So on a limited schedule, it's a little bit trickier to get that timing in. And also, when you get down to Aswan, you have further to go back to get back up to Cairo. Now, if you're flying, this doesn't really make a huge deal, but if you're taking a train or a bus to get back up, this makes a big difference. It's much better to fly all the way down to Aswan and start there and then cruise up to Luxor, going back to Cairo at the end. Now that I've talked a little bit about the Nile cruise and why the timing of the trip was starting on a Monday, leaving the United States, I wanna chat about what I've got included on the itinerary for Cairo. 
if you only have seven days in Egypt, you're probably just going to spend two days in Cairo, and that's enough to get the highlights of the city. I put things in the itinerary like visiting the Giza pyramids and the Sphinx, of course. I also put the Grand Egyptian Museum in there because hopefully this museum, you know, this trip is supposed to happen in April, so hopefully this museum is going to be open by then, and that's going to be a must-see when in Cairo. I also put in some Coptic Christian and some Islamic sites. I think that when traveling in Egypt, it's so important for a traveler to not just visit the ancient stuff. Don't just go to the temples and the tombs and the pyramids and the museums, but spend some time visiting the Christian monuments and the Islamic monuments in Egypt. Egypt has such a rich history for Christianity and Islam, and it goes beyond just the ancient stuff and the pharaohs. So I always recommend visiting some sites like Coptic Cairo and then going to Hossein Mosque, Al Azhar Mosque, and visiting the Khan Khalili Market and Moaz Street. And then you'll also see in my itinerary my recommendations for some of my favorite restaurants for tourists to go to when they're in Egypt. And then on Friday morning, be ready for a super early wake up call because you're going to fly from Cairo down to Aswan and board your Nile cruise. The thing about a Nile cruise that a lot of people don't know is that it's really just like a floating hotel. You don't actually spend a lot of time cruising the Nile. That stretch of the Nile between Aswan and Luxor is only about a four hour drive in the car. So it's not a lot of distance for a cruise ship to cover. So you'll actually spend some of your time on the cruise ship just docked at a port in Aswan and in Luxor. And you're only gonna spend a little bit of time cruising between those two cities. So when you start in Aswan, you'll be able to visit the sites that are in that city, spend the night on your cruise ship. The next morning, you'll have the option to visit the beautiful temple of Abu Simbel. That'll be another very early wake up call. And then you'll start cruising northward to Luxor following the flow of the Nile River. You'll be able to visit temples along the way like Komombo Temple. And when you are sailing between Aswan and Luxor, you'll eventually end up in Luxor, spend the night there, and then you'll be visiting the sites on Luxor's East Bank and Luxor's West Bank. So this is the stuff like the Valley of the Kings where King Tut's tomb is, or Hatshepsut's temple, or Karnak Temple, the largest religious complex in all of Egypt. So you're gonna be visiting all of these things as part of your cruise, and spending some time sailing on the Nile between those two cities. When your cruise finishes in Luxor, I put in a flight to leave from Luxor that evening and to head back up to Cairo. And then you'll notice that the flight from Cairo back to Minneapolis is really, really early in the morning at like 1 a.m. So travelers wouldn't even need to leave the airport. You would just get your baggage off the flight from Luxor to Cairo, maybe would need to switch terminals, get rechecked in, and get ready for your flight back to the United States. So I don't really recommend travelers spend just seven days in Egypt because that's such a short amount of time. But if you've only got a limited amount of time and you want to do a Nile cruise and see the highlights in Cairo, this is the itinerary I would recommend. Now let's talk about the second itinerary option. Seven days in Egypt, no Nile cruise, but visiting Cairo, Luxor, Aswan, and my favorite city in Egypt, Alexandria. I started this fictional itinerary on Friday, March 24th. The reason why I wanted to start it on a Friday is to highlight that you can have a seven day trip in Egypt while only taking five days off of work if you're willing to leave on a Friday late at night and pack that itinerary in tight. So leaving Minneapolis Friday night, arriving in the morning in Europe, then having a couple of flights, Minneapolis, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Paris, Paris to Cairo, landing in Cairo, like I shared earlier, late, late the next day. So we left the United States on a Friday. We didn't get to Egypt until late, late Saturday night. So we left on Friday. The trip doesn't really start until Sunday. Then on Sunday, I have travelers hitting the ground running. You spent the night at the airport hotel. So the next morning you caught a flight right away and headed down to Luxor seeing the East Bank sites of Luxor, like Karnak Temple and Luxor Temple, because those are easier to see in the afternoon and evening. Then spending the night in Luxor and doing the West Bank of Luxor the next day. So Valley of the Kings, Valley of the Queens, Hatshepsut's Temple, Medinet Habu, and what other sites you can squeeze in before hiring a private transfer to go from Luxor down to Aswan. 
It's also an option to do a train from Luxor to Aswan, but at the making of this video, I've been hearing a lot of talk of delays and issues with the trains in Upper Egypt. So I've been told by my trusted travel partners, it's better to do a private transfer at this point, but the train is always an option as well. I recommend just spending one day in Aswan to get the highlights, visiting the Temple of Isis on the island of Philae, visiting the unfinished obelisk, and going to the High Dam. Other great spots include the Nubian village for people who really, really like shopping or to visit all the colorful houses. I also love going to the ruins of Abu on Elephantine Island. But if you've got a limited amount of time, you just want to see the highlights. Then fly back from Aswan to Cairo later in that evening and check into the hotel in Cairo that'll be your hotel for the rest of the trip. I had this itinerary conclude in Cairo for a reason. I love being in Cairo on the weekends. Cairo is an amazing city for nightlife. They've got really great dancing and drinking options, but also the more Egyptian version of nightlife, going to an ahua or a local coffee shop and hanging out, playing games with friends, people watching, having a tea, having a coffee, smoking a shisha, a, a water pipe or a hookah as we call it in the United States. That's really like quintessential a nighttime experience in Egypt. And the best time to do that in Cairo is on the weekends. Thursday night and Friday night. So on Wednesday, I have travelers visiting the Giza Plateau because you never want to go to the Giza Plateau on a weekend. There are tons and tons of Egyptians there on Fridays and quite a few as well on Saturdays. Those are the two days off in Egypt. Friday, the biggest day where pretty much everybody has it off of work. So you don't want to go to the Giza Plateau on that day. So I put it on the Wednesday. And then on Thursday, that's when travelers get to visit Egypt's Mediterranean jewel, Alexandria. Alexandria is such a great place to visit because it has Greco-Roman ruins that you won't see the likes of anywhere else in Upper Egypt or in Cairo. And then they also have delicious seafood and it's right on the Mediterranean Sea. So you've spent the whole trip on the Nile River in Cairo and Luxor and Aswan, and then you get to see the beautiful vista of the Mediterranean coastline. And Alexandria is a pretty easy day trip. You just leave early in the morning. It's about a three hour drive there do some sightseeing, leave there around four o'clock or stay, stick around for dinner if you want, head back to Cairo. And then Thursday and Friday are when I've got all the nightlife options for travelers. And then this Egypt adventure concludes on an early morning flight, just like I was saying earlier, a lot of flights to the United States will leave at like one in the morning, two in the morning, from Cairo back to Paris, and then Paris back to Minneapolis. Now that I've shared these two itineraries, I wanna let you know options where you can download these itineraries and use them to help you plan your Egypt adventure. But first, before I share that, I wanna mention that I love making customized itineraries. I've helped out dozens of travelers over the past couple of years with their trips to Egypt, and I can take your exact trip, your exact dates, your exact interests, and make a totally customized and tailored itinerary for your needs. So send me an email, Gus at Egypt Adventures Travel, and we can talk about options for creating an itinerary and then connecting you with a vetted and trusted local guide to help make that itinerary happen. I'm gonna be sending out the PDF versions of these itineraries in my next email newsletter. So that's how you're gonna be able to get access to these. You can sign up for my newsletter by typing in www.tinyurl.com slash eat, like Egypt Adventures Travel, eat newsletter. That'll bring you to a form to fill out. I'll be emailing this newsletter at the end of November, and that's gonna have in it tons of YouTube videos, blog posts, information on travel to Egypt, in addition to the PDF versions of these itineraries. If you're watching this video late and you missed the chance, Feel free to sign up for my newsletter anyway. I'm always gonna be emailing every month great resources to, for travel to Egypt, and I plan on doing later on a 10-day itinerary version, so I'll be sending that out in my newsletter as well. But if you're watching this late, you want access to this PDF, shoot me an email, gus at egyptadventurestravel.com, and I'll send you that itinerary in PDF format. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm always glad to help people with their travel to Egypt. Until next time, I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel.